a good God for us. I don't know if this morning you came with a need. God is a God that loves to fill emptiness. When the earth was created, it says that there was a void on the earth. And he blew and his spirit filled the earth. And you and I are the result of God filling a need, filling an emptiness. If there's an emptiness in your life, in, in your heart today, somewhere in the, in the bottom of your soul, in your spirit, I want to let you know that I believe God can fill every need you've come with this morning. He's able to meet you right where you are. If you would only just believe that he is a God of miracles. Do you believe he's a miracle working God in this place? Let's worship his name today.
church. We have uh, 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 classes, uh, uh, 101, 201, 301, and 401. And the simple way to remember that is the first Sunday of every month, we have 101. Second Sunday, 201. Third Sunday, 301. And the fourth Sunday, 401. These classes are going to be starting right after service, beginning in November. You want to be a part of these things. This is a great way to get to know who we are. We get to know who you are. And so we're excited for you to be a part of this. I'm going to encourage you to sign up with one of our team members. If you're interested in being a part of this, if you're saying, I want to be connected to the church, I want to see God change lives, I want to be a part of those changes, 
I want to encourage you to sign up. So I encourage you to see someone uh, from our, one of our team members, and they'll gladly sign you up as we get ready for our next season of Growth Track, or I should say our beginning season of Growth Track starting in November. Look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. Company and You're not wearing that mask. Um, not the whole thing. Make sure you sign up as soon as possible. I'm not wearing glasses. I'm not gonna wear the glasses. You're not gonna wear the whole thing. Be good. <laughs> We're so excited that you're with us today. Uh, we want you to know that we are a network of churches that are being raised up all across not only our city, but even our nation. And so we want to encourage you this coming, uh, as we get ready for a new season, uh, this coming March, we have a bunch of churches, about 19 so far that are being planted all across our nation. We want to encourage you to join us in prayer. We believe that God is going to reach a new group of people and touch lives. So I encourage you to join us in prayer. Be praying for our network. Be praying for our churches that are going to be raised up, the churches that are going to be planted. God loves church planting. God loves reaching souls. God loves you. So I encourage you to join us. Be with us. We're excited about what God is doing. We look forward to seeing God raise up new people and change lives. God bless you. Stay with us in prayer. Why don't we prepare today as we get ready to collect the Lord's tithe and your offering today. I'm going to ask you if you need an envelope today. Uh, there should be one on your chair. Uh, there are other means in which you can give today. Uh, you can give electronically. Uh, you can use your phone and log on to our website at uh, qgardens.cityreachnetwork uh, and you can log on there and give online. You can go on push pay, download the app and just be able to do it from there and give uh, in that way. Uh, so I want to encourage you to make sure that you are uh, checking out those venues in which you can give today. <coughs> If you're paying by check, I'm going to ask you to make it payable to City Reach Network and just put on the memo, Q Gardens, that'll just be put on the bottom there uh, for us to know uh, which church is coming from because we have quite a few City Reach churches that are planted all throughout our nation um, and even actually across uh, and other parts of the world as well today. So I'm going to ask you today, as you prepare to give today, I'm going to ask you to lift up your obedience in your right hand. Giving is about obedience. 
It's not about money, it's about obedience today. So if you're giving in an envelope, just lift up your envelope. If you're giving electronically, I'm going to ask you to lift up your phone as we get ready to pray the Lord's blessing over you. And when we're done praying, uh, our ushers are going to come and they're going to serve you. Just follow their direction as they get ready to do that now today. Come on, lift up from your right hand in obedience. Father, we're grateful today, Lord, for this opportunity to be able to give, oh God. Because, Lord, we know that we're sowing seed, oh God, into your kingdom to build your kingdom here on earth, dear God. Not man's kingdom, but your kingdom, oh God. Father, I pray, dear God, with those that are giving today, dear God, that you would, Father, meet the needs, O oh Lord, of this house, O oh God. Father, help us, dear God, that as we give, O oh God, that you would help us to reach, Father, souls, that you would help us to reach lives, dear God, that you would help us to change lives, O oh God. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, O oh Lord. I pray that you would bless the tithe and with the tithe is blessing. As you promised that you would in Malachi chapter 3, when you said that you would pour out a blessing, O oh God, beyond what they can contain, O oh Lord. Father, I pray for those that are giving offering today and saying thank you, Lord, for what you've done, O oh Lord. I pray, dear God, that you would honor their thanksgiving offering today, dear God, and bless them, O oh Lord, today. Meet our needs according to your riches and glory. We honor you and we praise you, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen and amen. Our ushers will serve the people of God. Alexander Martinez, I like to be referred to as Alex. I'm a school social worker and also a uh, psychotherapist. What brings me to City Reach uh, Church Q Gardens is the atmosphere, uh, uh, the people, uh, the excitement, obviously the, the connection with, with God and, and being filled uh, by the Word and, and being able to, to, to learn and and love and so forth. So I really love it there. A major obstacle that I faced this 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 year, uh, particularly around around parenting. You know, I have three kids and uh, married to my wife, and uh, you know, raising children is, is absolutely the most challenging thing in the, in the whole wide world for me at least. And uh, being able to, to to reach out to to folks at City Beach. Uh, really is, is helpful in, in being honest, being transparent, uh, uh, being part of an environment that's accepting and, and loving. And, and it allows me to, to, to really learn 
and work through some of these challenges and, and, and being uh, a dad and so forth. So. What, what's amazing in being able to uh, move forward is, is God looking out for me and, and myself learning how to connect more with God through the Holy Spirit. And uh, being part of the City Reach, I've learned how to, how, and I'm continuing to learn, uh, how to be a better discerner. And it's absolutely amazing when, when my ego is put aside and to use a little bit of psychology talk and, and so forth. Um, but to, to really be humble. You know, in order for, for God to do His work uh, through me. And uh, I would hope that, that um, as you guys participate and, and uh, help us build this community, that you too will allow yourself to be, to, to be open and teachable and, and so forth. I would ask you that as you go through your life trials, uh, that, that you not get bogged down. And even if you do, to, to really break through those those barriers that, that uh, create prisons, you know, emotional prisons, uh, social prisons where you isolate yourself and, and think that you can resolve this on, on your own. And uh, to really, you know, pay attention. Pay attention to the environment here and how people connect and, and are, are really transparent. And, you know, if you're not used to it, just, just to expose yourself and, 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 and uh, be observant. And uh, I would hope that, that it's something that you can learn and be able to, uh, to open up and, and be teachable yourself in this process of creating community. And it's, a, it's an amazing process. I know I've grown a lot at 41 years old and, and, I, and I stand to learn a lot more. So I look forward to, to growing with everyone else here and I appreciate you for coming. Amen, amen. Growing forward. This is a new series that we're embarking on today. I'm going to ask you to open up in your Bibles to the book of John. John is found in the New Testament of your Bible. John chapter 15. And I just want to read just a few passages of Scripture today. John chapter 15. I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. John chapter 15. And I'm going to begin reading uh, at verse number 1 today. If you have it in your Bible, or your phone, or it's here on the screen displayed for you, allow me to begin. John chapter 15 and verse number 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me. As I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the true vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because servants does not uh, know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my commandment. 
love each other. May the Lord add blessing to his word. This is a powerful, powerful scripture for me, and it really stands out, and it's really profound. Uh, and, and I recall when I, was, um, when I was a kid growing up, I was a young boy, and I couldn't wait to grow up. You know, at that age, you know that age when, when you couldn't wait to, you know, get older and do things on your own, that age when you couldn't wait to grow up. I wanted to just be a big guy, a big man, and do things on my own. I, I couldn't wait to grow some facial hair. Right? I'm still, I still can't wait to grow facial hair. I'm still working on it. I, I couldn't wait to grow facial hair because I couldn't wait to grow up. I, I couldn't wait to have my own place because I, I couldn't wait to grow up. I wanted to be independent. I, I wanted to grow because I felt that was a sign of growing up. Uh, facial hair was a sign of growing up. Having my own place was a sign of growing up. And I couldn't wait to do it. I couldn't wait to grow up. I couldn't wait to grow up and do what I wanted to do without having to ask anybody's permission, right? And then I got married, and then I was all gone. <laughs> but, 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 but I remember, I couldn't wait to grow up because in growing up, I, I, I said, you know, I can do things on mine. I don't have to ask mom or dad anymore. I don't have to be uh, responsible to anybody except for myself. I can do what I want. I couldn't wait to grow up. What I learned along the way is that this journey of growing up is really not easy. This journey of, of getting older and growing up is it, 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 difficult, it's challenging. In fact, I learned that growing takes time, and I had to be intentional about it. I, I, I realized that, that growing, it just it takes time, because it's not necessarily about getting older. It, it, this idea of growing, it, it takes time, and I, I have to be intentional if I'm going to grow. I realized, check this out with me, that I could be going through life but not necessarily growing through life. Mm, let me say that again, because that, that, that should have hit you hard. I, I, I could be going through life, but not necessarily growing through life. That's right. and, and there came a point in my life where I realized that perhaps I'm going through it, but I'm not necessarily growing through it. And, 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 and there are some challenges that I needed to deal with. And today, as we embark on this new series called Growing forward, I want to spend the next few moments speaking to you under the subject connected. Come on, somebody say connected. connected. Look at your neighbor, tell them connected. 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 Because whether you realize it or not, God desires us to grow forward. <clears throat> he desires you and I that you and I might grow forward. Not necessarily go forward, but grow forward. In other words, God desires that you and I are consistently developing in our lives. Uh, he, he doesn't want you and I staying stuck or, or plateauing in our lives. We should be forever growing. We should be forever developing. We should be forever maturing even. You see, growing and moving forward is an essential part of what God has called us to do as believers. He doesn't want us stuck. Too often you and I realize that, that when you stay stuck, oftentimes in life, if you've ever met anybody who stayed stuck or you've ever been stuck yourself, you know that there's a sense of feeling hopeless and helpless. I feel like I'm in this place. I can't get out. I don't feel like I can move forward. I, I feel this place where I'm literally stuck in my life and it feels empty because hopelessness, I want you to know, makes you feel empty. It makes you feel like this. Your, your life is depleted of literal life. I, I, I'm stuck here. I, I, I'm not moving forward. I'm not getting to where I'm going. I feel so frustrated with life and growing forward is actually part of our DNA when you and I enter a relationship with Jesus. Because Jesus now coming to live inside of us, His Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside of us and we become part of, and we're engrafted into the body of Christ. And as you and I become engrafted and become a, a, a son and daughter of God, what, 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 that DNA, He puts this DNA inside of us that keeps us oftentimes frustrated because you don't want to stay stuck in the circumstance that you're in. That's why oftentimes we as believers, when you begin to follow Christ, you realize that you, you, you can't stay stuck in the status quo. The status quo frustrates you. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. As a matter of fact, if the truth be told, people who are stuck in the status quo frustrate you. It's not because people are frustrating, though that may be true. Come on, don't look at your neighbor. Uh, and, and not that people are frustrating, but that the fact is, is that you and I get frustrated because we're not called to stay stuck in one place. When you and I follow Christ, God calls us to move forward, to grow forward. Amen. In this particular text, in John chapter 15, the text that we just read in this book, 
Jesus begins to communicate to his disciples in a way that they might understand. Because Jesus always speaks to you, hear what I'm about to say, always speaks to you in the context of where you are. In this particular context, these people are surrounded by agriculture. They're surrounded by, by fishing and they're surrounded by farming and, and they're surrounded by the agricultures of life. And so he speaks to them from the context of where they are. You, you, you'll find that Jesus always, uh, uh, and, and even in his illustrations, it's not that he's trying to confuse you and I in this day and age. It's that he was trying to speak specifically to their circumstance. And so he uses this idea of agriculture to illustrate to them what he wants them to know. Because Jesus wants you and I to get it. See, I need you and I to understand that because oftentimes we think that God wants to keep us confused. God is not in the business of having you confused because if you and I are confused, we will never be able to go where we need to go. If you and I don't know where we're going, so God wants to speak to us in the context of where you and I are. So Jesus begins to, to make some things clear to his disciples, and he's speaking to them, and, and, and beginning to make them aware that, that, that his time uh, with them was running out, so he wanted them to, to let them know what was important for him and for them. He, he wanted them to know, he said, this, there's some things that I got to let you know that are, that are important for you, as well as they're important to me. And as you read the text, there's one word that seems to stand out over and over and over again. And the word is remain. Say remain with me. Remain. remain. Jesus is being intentional about what he wants them to know. He wants to be clear to them. And so he repeats the word remain over and over and over again. When I was a kid growing up, my, my, my stepfather, I was raised with my stepfather, and, and, and my stepfather, I, I called him dad, he was my dad, and he was my father, and I remember that any time that my dad wanted to tell me something, he always told me more than once. In fact, if the truth be told, my dad told me things three times. Now, I was a kid who has ADD and ADHD. I still have it. I haven't grown out of it. <laughs> Uh, and, and, you know, and so you ta you're talking to me, and the fact that you're telling me something three times, I feel like you are torturing me. You might as well take the belt and just whip me with it, because I feel like this is what's happening. I have to stay here and listen. I'm bracing myself with all that I can to hold on to my pants, and I'm holding on to, to different things, just trying to get it, because I cannot stand here any longer. Just tell me once, and I'll get going, because I'm itchy. i got to go. But, but my dad wanted me to know what he wanted me to understand. And now, as a father of two, I oftentimes tell my kids things more than once. Because I want them to get it. I, I, I need them to get it. I, I, I want them to acknowledge that they got it. And so Jesus is talking to us. And he, he's talking as if a father would speak to his sons. And he tells them he tells them that he uses the word remain. And he uses it over and over again. See, because Jesus wanted his disciples to get it. This passage of scripture can be summed up in one word. And that's connected. Connected. See, I want to spend the next few moments uh, and, and for really gleaning from this particular text uh, that's, that, that's going to help you and I grow forward in our faith and in our lives. And I believe that it is imperative that you and I know some things. And, and so I want to extract some things from this particular text that I believe is going to help us in growing forward. The first thing that I really believe that we can glean from this text that's going to help you and I to grow forward is that, listen to this, connections are key for our growth. Let me say that again. Connections are key for our growth. This particular text is replete with the idea that you and I need to connect, remain with God. Remain in the vine. Remain in my love. Remain in my word. He, he uses it over and over and over again. Jesus in the text is talking to his disciples of the importance of staying connected to Jesus and his word. See, according to Jesus, if you and I remain connected, our lives will bear fruit. In other words, uh, if you and I remain connected, and, and, that you and I will grow forward is what, is what he's saying. Because your life bearing fruit is an illustration, if you will, of you and I growing forward. It's, it's of you and I not staying stuck. It's of you and I moving uh, to a better place, if you will, in our lives. In other words, that, uh, that we live in with uh, all the technology that, uh, right now in the, in, the, in the life that you and I live, the life that you and I live today, with all the technology that we have, if the truth be told, we're less connected than we've ever been. Come on, you know what's true. We are less connected than we've ever been. We have Facebook, we have Twitter, 
We have Instagram. We have cell phones. I, I remember, I remember, I remember the first cell phone. I remember because I had a buddy who had one. Uh, it was like carrying a suitcase around. <laughs> hey. I remember I was dating my wife at the time. I said, hey, baby, you, you never get yes, I'm calling you from a cell phone. <laughs> I couldn't stay too long because it was like a thousand dollars for one minute. <laughs> Right, <laughs> and, and so, 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 with all this technology, uh, all this social media that we have, we're, we're less and less connected. And, and and I'm all for social media, but, but but I don't want social media to take the place of me socializing. My socializing is what keeps me connected. My social media is what keeps me informed. You see, there, there needs to be a difference here. Because many of us are informed on what other people are doing, but we're not connected with other people. That's right. we, we, we know about what other people, what's going on. We know the vacations they took. We, we know where they went. But we don't know what's going on in their lives. Because a picture, here, though, here a picture though it says a thousand words, really kind of gives you only a second, a second glimpse of what happened during that moment. That's right. It doesn't tell you what happened before. It doesn't tell you what happened afterward. And so uh, the, the idea of social media is, is that it keeps us informed. And you and I don't need more information. We need more connections. That's what we believe here in this church. We have a, a, a time. We believe service. We believe church starts at, it starts at 11 o'clock. And we believe that it starts with fellowship, with, with connection. That's why we have this food here. That's why we're here at 11. We're not late. We know exactly what time we're starting. We're starting at 11 o'clock. In fact, our team is supposed to be prepared for when people get here. They're here, and we're making sure that we're connecting with you because we know that connections are so vital for your growth and for ours. Amen. Vital. That's why it's so important that, that we attend church. And listen, I can hear a good word on TV. I listen to Bishop T.D. Jakes all the time. The dude is phenomenal. I love Bishop. I, I, I love his word. But I can't get connected through the TV. I can receive a word, but I can't get connected through the TV. And so, 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 so uh, uh, the word is good, but absolutely, but, but you and I can't socialize with TV. Connections are the key for our growth, church. They're the key for our growth. Connections challenge us. That's why you get challenged. You know how you get challenged? When you're in a relationship with somebody. And you're in a relationship with somebody, and they say, you know what, this thing in your life, man, you, listen, you, you and me are tight, man, and I love you, but this thing in your life, man, it's messing you up. Now, now, you've kind of stepped into a little guy. You got a little closer, you know. But, but, but what does that, that's, you, you, can't, you can't have that any other way but through connections. Connections keep you and I in check. Connections keep us in check. Connections tell us when something is off and when something is right. Connections encourage us. Connections, when you, when you and I are connected with people, they're the ones who are your biggest cheerleaders. Man, y'all, I'm so, I, I'm hyped for you, I'm so excited for you. I can't wait, I believe in you. That only happens through connections. Yeah, I can read about somebody being excited for me, but it's, it's one thing to hear them say it. It's one thing to experience them saying it. Connections reveal things about us. You know it's true because when you're, in, when you're in a relationship with somebody, sometimes people bring the worst out in you. Yeah. Nobody here, don't look around. <laughs> Nobody here, but let, let's be honest. Connections kind of bring things out in you that you didn't know that were in you. And, and sometimes, sometimes, before you cut those connections off, you might understand, you might ask yourself, and you might have to check for a minute because maybe that's the perfect connection for you. Because sometimes those connections, when, when they bring out the worst in you, sometimes they're the best thing for you because they're revealing for you what's inside. They're revealing what's inside. It's like a sponge. Uh, when, when, the other day I took a sponge and I spilled some juice on the counter and I cleaned it up. I didn't rinse out the sponge, I cleaned it up. And I cleaned up the, the, the counter and the sponge was there. But the sponge, the moment uh, my wife took it and squeezed it, what came out? All the stuff that I cleaned out, it was a different color. See, because when you and I are squeezed, something's going to come out. The question is, what's coming out? And only the way you're going to know what's coming out is through relationship. Those are good things for us. Sometimes we think, no, that's bad. No, what? that's good because they reveal what's inside of us. They reveal what we've been carrying around like that sponge, what we've been holding on to like that sponge. 
connection. That's, that's why I often tell people that, that I, I'm not asking you uh, to join a religion. Religion for centuries has harmed people. Religion uh, can be oftentimes the worst thing that's happened to humanity. God doesn't even invite you to a religion. He invites you into a relationship. Look at the text. We just read it. He said, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. Wow. Relationship. I'm asking you, and I know that the Bible tells us that God is interested in a relationship with us. It's all about relationships. You and I can't have relationship with, uh, with God without being connected to Him and to others. That's why he said the greatest command. The greatest command is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. He said, and the other one is just like it. He connected it. He didn't separate it. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. You see, you can't love people from afar. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. There's people that live far away and you love them that way. But I'm talking about relationship. You can't have true relationship from afar. You can't. It just doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. We need to be connected. Come on, look at your name. Tell them, get connected. Get connected. Get connected. Say it in any language you want. Get connected. The, the, the text not only tells us that, and it leans in this idea that we should get connected. The second thing that the text kind of gleaned, that we can glean from this text, that's going to help us grow forward, is not only getting connected, but also that he, he has us understand that if you and I are going to grow forward, there's some things that have to be cut. Come on. Mm. I'm going to go there. I'm getting excited about it. <laughs> that there's some things that are going to have to be cut. You see, when I, when I was a kid, I, I was on a travel football team. And, and basically what a travel football team is, is that I was on, uh, we, 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 we played on a team and it would travel. <laughs> it would travel from different boroughs, we would go to different places, and we would play other, uh, 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 other uh, uh, teams from different areas. And, and being on this travel team, we had to go and we had to show up to every single practice. Every, we have to be in practice from the day that it started, so the day game one was about to, and in fact, here's the, 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 the crazy thing about it. You didn't know if you were on the team until the end. You didn't know if you were on the team. You would have to run every practice. You would have to run every drill. We would have to be, and, and we were playing constantly, constantly. We would have scrimmage games. We would do all these things. And I had to come, to, everybody had to come to practice all the time. But, but, when it was time, toward the end, right before the game, the real games began, when it was time, the coach, for, to, for the coach to assemble a team, uh, uh, he would begin to pick players and he would begin to cut players. Some people got their feelings hurt, but he had to let them know. He said, listen, I have to cut some people and I have to keep some people because some people, listen, if I don't cut you, we're not going to win this game. We're not going to win. He, the coach was assembling a team, a team that would win. And so he had to cut people. He, he believed that he couldn't win with certain people on his team. Mm. Uh, hold on, I, I don't know if you got it yet, but, but here I come. You see, God does the same thing for us in our lives. There's some things he has to cut out of our lives because you and I can't win with those things in our lives. You and I can't move forward with those things in our life. And Jesus acts as the coach. And the Bible says that, that there's things in our life that are not bearing fruit that he has to cut. Because if he doesn't cut them, listen, you and I can't bear fruit in our lives. You and I can't bear fruit. There are things in our lives that if we are going to grow forward, we need to get cut from our lives. And listen, God knows we can win. God knows that we can grow forward, but there's some things that can't go with us if we're going to grow forward. There's some things that you can't go with. There's some things you just cannot go with because they're not going to help you win. And, and this is a tough part, church. Let me talk to you. This is a difficult part for us. It's difficult. And it gets difficult when things get cut out of our lives. Why does it get difficult? Because, listen, growing forward is not easy. And letting things go is not easy. Come on, you know what's true. There are people and there are things in your life that you no longer have in your life that you know are good now. You, you know now are good, but you went through agony when you were letting them go. 
Come on, when they were gone, you were you were you didn't know why God let this happen. You didn't know what in the world was going on. You didn't know if you were ever loved. You didn't know. You we were asking ourselves all these questions. But but perhaps perhaps we have to ask ourselves. Maybe just maybe God cut those things out of our lives so you and I could grow forward, so that you and I can win. See, because it's not easy growing forward. It's not easy, and, and, and oftentimes, that's why we don't grow forward, because we're not willing to let things go, because everything can't go with you where you're going. Oh, man, I, 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 I don't have a lot of time, but, but, but if I could, if, if I could for a minute, there, there, there are things in your life that, that maybe you know that it's time for you to let go of them, and you've been holding on to them, and you know that they're keeping you stuck. And let me just tell you that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I want you to know that you and I can't grow forward. We and I can't win if we're stuck with the same old things in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's those instances in our lives where we have to let some things go. Come on, say let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Come on, this is, come on, look at your name, tell let it go. I know you're always thinking of the Disney song, let it go. But, but, but there's some things that we got to let go of. And what I love here is that God doesn't tell us to let it go. He says that he cuts it out. He cuts it out. That, 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 let me tell you something. That I, I, this is so profound and powerful. Because when he says he cuts it out, that means God is intentional about your growth. Yes, thank you. I'm glad you said that, Pastor Dave. Thank you. He's intentional about our growth. In other words, he wants us to grow. God wants us to experience his favor. God wants us to experience his blessing. But, but, but you and I, as we're trying to experience it, he, he has to say, listen, there's things that you're not willing to let go that I just got to cut out. I just got to cut out. See, that's what a parent does for a child. There's some things that you know, listen, now, come on, how many parents here have said, listen, I know you, you, you'll thank me later, but I got to let this go. You'll thank me later, right? They don't understand. They're dying. It's like you torture them. It's like you be, if somebody had the door closed and they were listening on the other side, it would sound like you were beating your child. You got to cut it out. You got to cut it out. And I love that because it, it, it reminds me of the scripture that God says that he that began a good work will carry it out until he completes it until the day of Christ Jesus. And that's powerful because it lets me know that, that God is working in me. God is working in you. Cut it out. Cut it out. The, the, the third thing here that we can extract, and there's so many, but, but I just want to stay with three here today for lack of time. The third thing that we can extract from this text is not only that, that we need to stay connected and not only that there are things that need to be cut out, but let me let you know that growth takes effort. So say effort with me. Yeah. Growth takes effort. The text tells us over and over again, remain, 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 remain. It's a lot of work to remain. It's a lot of work to hang in there. It's a lot of work to hold on. Uh, recently, a couple of years ago, and it's never gone away, a couple of years ago, I got tennis elbow. Not because I play tennis, but because as, I, I, as I'm in the gym, I end up doing repetitive exercises. And when you do a repetitive exercise, uh, it begins to work in this area here where there are blood vessels that begin to work. We're transitioning mics now. Amen. There's some blood vessels that build up blood, and when they build up blood, what it does is it causes excruciating pain. In fact, the pain is so intense that it's hard to grab something. You can't pick up anything heavy, because when you pick up something heavy, the pain builds up, and the blood is not flowing, so it causes a jam up, if you will, in your, in, in your blood vessels, and it causes pain. That's what tennis elbow is. And, and, and there, were, there were times where, where I was getting this, this tennis elbow because I was holding on and doing this repetitive exercise. Because holding on, this is what I want to say, holding on is, is a lot of work. It's a lot of strain. Sometimes it causes pain. In fact, I would even say that holding on has all to do with this idea of you and I persevering in life. You and I persevering. That's what I'm speaking about today when I, when I talk about growing takes effort. For you and I to grow, you and I have to learn that we can't quit on this. 
You can't give up too early. You, you can't give up because you're tired. You can't give up because you've had it. You can't give up because a relationship frustrated you. You can't give up because things are not going the way you had hoped right now. You and I can't give up just because things are not the way we had hoped for, we had planned for, or we desired to see. You and I can't give up too early. In fact, Bible is oftentimes and it repeats it over and over and it's replete with the text that tells us that we ought to persevere, not quit. All throughout the scriptures, don't grow weary in well-doing, but at the proper time, the text says, you'll be for harmless. We can't give up, we can't quit. Things are going to happen to push us to our limit. You and I have to persevere. There's a story, with this I get ready to close. There's an illustration of a, a woman, a true story, about a woman who was swimming in the English Channel. She wanted to break a record and she wanted to swim from one end of the channel to the other. And in this particular, in the, in, in the channel, uh, there, was, uh, there were different fish, barracuda, and different things, and she was concerned. And so uh, what they would do is that they had boats swimming alongside of her, and they would shoot flares in the air. Because the bright light would oftentimes scatter the, the, the fish that were there. They wouldn't swim to it, they would swim away from it. And so after shooting flares over and over again, the woman is swimming. And as she's swimming, she can't see her destination. She knows she's going in the right direction, but she doesn't know if she's there or not. And so she's swimming and swimming, and they're shooting flares, and they're shooting flares, and they're shooting flares to keep all the animals away from her. As she's swimming, she's, she's exhausted now. She doesn't know if the end is near or not. And she keeps on swimming. And there comes a point where she lifts her hand and she says, I can't make it. I, I'm done. I, I'm exhausted. I can't make it. The moment she lifts her hand, they stop shooting the flares. And they send a little boat to come and get her. And they pick her out of the boat. And as they pick her out of the boat, the smoke clears. And as they get her out of the boat, they put her in, as they get her out of the water, they put her into a little rowboat to take her into the ship. She looks. And her destination was right there. She had a chance to break the record. She had a chance to be the first woman to swim across the channel. She, she was just about to make it, but she couldn't see the end. She couldn't see if it was near. She gave up. I want to let you know that sometimes when you and I are going through things, when we're growing, things get clouded around us. When you and I are growing forward and when you and I are moving to our place and, and where God wants us to be, sometimes things get so clouded around us that you and I can't see. We know we're going in the right direction, but we don't know that the end is coming. We don't know that the end is near. We don't know that, that our blessing is about to come. We don't know that there's a change that's about to shift. We don't know that there's a transition that's about to come. We don't know it. We can't see it because everything is clouded by the circumstances that surround us. I want to encourage you, church. I want to encourage you. <clears throat> Growth takes effort. Effort means that you and I can't give up. We have to persevere. Martin Luther said it this way. This life, therefore, is not righteousness, but growth in righteousness. Not health, but healing. Not being, but becoming. Not rest, but exercise. We are not yet what we shall be, but we are growing toward it. The process is not yet finished, but it is going on. This is not the end, but it is the road. All does not yet gleam in glory, but all is being purified. Powerful. Martin Luther, one of the founding fathers of faith, speaks this profound word to us today. In other words, don't give up. Grow forward. This is, your, this is where you are right now. We're excited. This is a new church, and we're, we're seeing God change lives, and we're seeing things happen. And God is reaching people and changing lives. But I want you to know that in that entire process, you and I are called to continue to grow forward. Amen? Amen? Let's bow our heads today. As we get ready to close in, in prayer, I just want to take this opportunity to do two things. I want you to know that uh, we have our, our prayer team on my left and your right. They're going to be standing there. If today you're standing in the need of prayer, if you say, I, I need prayer, I, I want to grow forward, but I, I'm challenged with getting connected, or, or I'm struggling uh, 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 
uh, with this idea of letting go, letting God cut some things out of my life, or, or perhaps uh, I'm at the place where I feel like giving up. I want you to know that our prayer team is here on my left, your right, to pray for you. If you need prayer, I'm just going to ask you just to move there. But maybe there's some folks here today. You're standing here today. Every head is bowed and eyes closed. You're standing here today, or I should say, you're sitting here today, and you say, I want to get connected to God. I'm not yet quite connected to Him. And I want to connect to Him. What I'm talking about today is you are entering into a relationship with the Lord Jesus. That's what He wants. He wants relationship. He doesn't want religion. And that's what we're offering today. We're not offering religion. This is not a religious experience. This is a relational experience today. That's what we're offering you today. If you would say, Pastor, pray for me. I want Christ to come to my heart. I want him to be my Lord and my Savior. Just lift up your right hand. I don't want to embarrass you. I just want to pray for you right where you're at. Amen. I see that hand going up. I see those hands. Amen. Amen. I see that hand. It's about a relationship. That's what it's about. It's about a relationship. As you keep your hands lifted, this is what I want you to do. I want to pray for you right where you're at. Father, I thank you, Lord, for every hand that's lifted today in this place. God, you know them. You know them by heart, dear God. You know them by name. Yes, Father, you've watched over them. You've kept them this far. Hallelujah. My prayer today, dear God, is that as they confess with their mouth yes. that you are Lord and they believe in their heart that you've forgiven them of their sins, oh Lord. My prayer today, dear God, is that you would wash them clean. That you would help them to follow you all the days of their life, oh God, and keep them. Today, dear God, they're engrafted. They become part of the family of God. They become part of your, they, they become your son and your daughter today in this place. Lord, embrace them. Love them, oh God. Allow them to experience you in a greater way, dear God, as they journey and grow forward with you, dear God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a round of applause today. We believe today that if you lifted your hand and you prayed this prayer with us, we believe today that you become part of the family of God. And now the journey begins. But here's the case. We don't want you to do we don't want you to journey by yourself. No way. Come on. God never intended that. We want to journey with you. He, this is what it means. When we say we want to journey with you, that means we don't expect you to be perfect. As a matter of fact, we prepare everything in this service to let you know that we're not perfect. We wore our regular clothes. A regular clothes, a t-shirt, and jeans. We were regular people. We, we ate with you. You saw us eating together. We, we, we did everything because we want you to know that we want a journey with you in this life. And so, once a month, the pastors want to be able to gather with you and have dinner. We have what we call dinner with the pastors. It's once a month. And we've signed, some folks have signed up last week and and we're asking you today, if you're interested in having dinner with the pastor, it's going to be once a month, every month. I'm going to ask you to see Maggie. Maggie's in the back, beautiful Maggie. She's waving her pad. She's like a supermodel there waving the thing. Right? We're going to ask you to sign up with her. Put your name down. This is what we're going to ask you to do. We're going to ask you to look for an email because we're going to send you an email with information. An email for the address, the time, a confirmation that you're going to be there. We're going to give you the date. We're going to send you an email. We're going to have the date, the time, the location. I encourage you to be there. You say, well, how should I come to this dinner? Come just like you are. We'll be just like we are. But we want to get to know you a little bit better. We want to get to know you a little more today. Amen? Amen. Amen today. Amen. I want to also just give you a quick announcement before Pastor David comes and close us in a word of prayer. Today, we, if you notice, our, our children's church was a little bit restructured. So our children are actually behind that little barrier there. Next week we'll go back to normal. We'll have regular children's church. I thank you for, 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 for going along with us and journeying with us. Yeah. Right? This is a process of how we grow today. Amen? Amen? I also want to encourage you to invite somebody. Don't let somebody go without experiencing Christ. You're the one who brings people. And we're going to be together changing lives for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Let's end how we started. Let's just say the God who was and into and is to come will sing it once or twice and we'll end with the blessing of our lives. The God who was and is to come. The power of the Lord is The God who brings the dead to life. The God who brings the dead to life. You're the God. You're the God. Thank you.
spirit, say it with all your heart and all your soul.